Welcome to SCNC 1111 Group Project Tutorial. This video is about how do you make a good project. I'll give you some reminders as to what we think is a good project and what we think is not. Number one reminder is be insightful. This is the number one criteria we look into any group project. When you're deciding on the topic of your project, here are some obvious no's. First of all, we don't want the project to be too simple. For example, in previous years, there is a group doing a survey on height and weight of students. They came up with the conclusion that height is correlated with weight, and then went on to give some qualitative suggestions that teenagers who are tall should not worry that they are heavier than others. Obviously, the project is too simple and would to be difficult to impress us by telling us something that everyone takes as a fact. Second, we don't want the project to be mere reporting of facts. For example, don't just report some equations and formulas. We want to see some original input. If you include some equations and formulas, we hope to hear your interpretations of it, reflect on its assumptions, and perhaps you can apply some real-life data into it and see if the model works. You may also want to build your own model. Third, we don't want an unfocused project. We don't want to see unrelated parts. For example, a project with the title Amusement Park, and different parts is a discrete entity. Finally, please don't repeat the example I used in this video, unless you come up with something that outsmarts my idea. Otherwise, it will be difficult to impress us. The key to being insightful is to think in advance how the results of your project could be used. In previous years, there are many groups doing on this topic. We will talk about this in this video. So this is the exit A1 and A2 of the HKU station. The question of interest is whether taking A1 or A2 would lead you to a certain destination in HKU earlier. Now suppose the lift in A2 has a longer queue, but will lead you closer to the destination, and the lift in A1 has a shorter queue, but will lead you only half the way, and you have to walk a longer distance to reach your destination. So if both routes would take a certain amount of time. What most groups did is that they just measure the time it takes, which is not a very good idea since the results may not be very generalizable. So does this mean that you should measure the total time 10 times? Well, no again. If I have to do this project, I will break up the total time into three different parts. The queuing time, the lift time, and the walking time, which is represented by the equation here. Instead of the total time, I would break up this into smaller parts and investigate this problem part by part. I assume that the queuing time is a function of the length of the queue because after all, what makes you wait longer or shorter in a queue is how much people there are in a queue. Since the length of the queue may vary a lot in different times, I would rather investigate the relationship between the queue length and the queuing time so that I could apply my results on the field every time I make the decision A1 versus A2. As for the lift time, I think it should be more or less a constant, specific to the A1 or A2 route. So it is worth my time and effort to really go and measure it. As for the walking time, it should be further broken down into distance over speed. While the walking speed may vary a lot in different people, the distance between each exit to the destination is a constant, specific to A1 or A2 route, which is worth my time to really measure it. Before I begin actually measuring anything, Essentially, I already have a model of what the total time is. It depends on the length of the queue and the walking speed. Or in other words, the total time is a function of the length of the queue and the walking speed. Deep down in my heart, I'm expecting that the results of my project would tell me which exit to choose if I know my walking speed and if I know the length of the queue. But this is only one of the ways you may approach this problem. Here I will show you another way. Similarly, I break up the total time to the same components. What is different is that this time, 
assume that the walking speed of different people is a constant, which might be justifiable if I only want to apply the results to people of similar walking speeds, or if I think that the walking time is actually so short that even the fastest walkers would not reach the destination significantly earlier than the slowest walkers. So the walking time in this case is a function of the length of the cure only. Deep down in my heart, I would be expecting that the results of my project would tell me which exit to choose if I know the length of the cure. The most interesting, or I should say the most difficult part of this project would be to investigate the relationship between curing time and the length of the cure. We might have this picture in our minds. When the length of the cure varies, the curing time also varies. These two quantities would be linked together by a certain mathematical relationship, the simplest case being a linear line, although this is not necessarily true. How do we investigate what this function is? Here are some suggestions for you. If you have completely no idea, you may start collecting some data and see if you observe some pattern and then perform a regression. If you have some ideas in mind, you may simplify the situation by making some assumptions and then devise a model of your own. For example, this is the model in my head, which is a step function. I assume that on average, the lift arrives every minute. I also assume that each lift will carry exactly 20 people, so that it doesn't matter if you are the first or the 20th in the queue. You would need to wait one minute. But if you are the 21st person, then you have to wait another minute. Aside from making your own model, you can also look up if there are existing theories or models. And if you have the time and effort, why not try out all the methods? For example, even if you have a model in your mind based on your own thoughts, you may want to go collect some data and see if they fit the model. Other than the queuing time, the other parts of the project is straightforward. All you have to do is to go make some measurements. In this example, I'm lazy, so I go with the assumption that every person has similar walking speed. We add up the numbers and have this relationship. It is worth mentioning how you make your measurements in your presentation or essay. In the past, some students would just use Google Maps to determine the distance. My question to you is, do you trust the scale of the maps? For short distances, I would recommend that you count the number of steps, or count the number of tiles, or count the time it takes to walk at a constant speed towards your destination. In the end, we hope that you can give us some quantitative suggestions, rather than qualitative suggestions. For example, assume that the total time is a linear function of the cure length. This is just a made-up relationship for illustration, and could be an oversimplification. As you can see from this graph, when the cure length is equal, exit A2 would definitely be better. But when the cure length of A2 is more than 28 people longer than A1, exiting at A1 begins to be a good idea. This is what I mean by quantitative suggestion. Some hands-on for the project is welcomed. Other than taking some measurements, here are some suggestions. For example, you may want to go and verify if the results are applicable to real life. You may want to find a way to measure the length of the cure. For example, correlating it with the number of tiles on the floor. To do this, you can use a guesstimation or collect some data and perform regression, depending on what you think the focus of the project is. For hands-on, you can also use other people's models and then see if they fit the data you found. Again, you should aim for insightful conclusions. And if you use other people's model, make sure that you know the model well and apply it correctly. Which brings us to another reminder, that is to well justify your arguments. For example, if you use SIR models on AIDS, make sure you justify why you think the transmission of AIDS could be by random mixing. If you use the average rate, for example, if you say the annual rate of population increases 0.8%, make sure you know what you mean. For example, show us a plot. I will show you in an example. This is the population of Hong Kong from 1840 to 2014. If you just join the data points from 1840 to 2014 and divide it by the number of years, 
you will find this average rate of increase, which is obviously not very justifiable, because it is obvious that the population is increasing in a nonlinear fashion. It is also not very justifiable that you perform a linear regression to fit a linear model. It would be justifiable, however, if you fit it with a logistic model. And from this logistic model, you can see that the rate of increase in the population is actually changing over the years. The instantaneous rate, by the way, is given by the slope of the tangent to the curve, or what we call the derivative at the point. If you don't get what I just said, head over to the calculus app. If you zoom into the curve close enough, however, you will begin to see that the points seem to follow a linear trend. Under this circumstance, it might be justifiable to connect the data points from 2011 to 2014 and calculate the average rate. Alternatively, you can perform a linear regression on just these four data points, although the difference between these two approaches is very little. The final reminder is to stay focused. Student projects are usually limited by time, and therefore it is wise to not start too big. For example, instead of investigating the traffic pattern in Hong Kong, you may want to focus on just the volume of traffic in Bonham Road. Usually, a good project starts with only one big problem. For example, under what circumstance is it wise to choose exit A1 instead of exit A2? And the various parts of the project are just to address the same question. So this is a summary of the gentle reminders I have made in this video. Other videos in this series of video tutorials are about plotting graphs and performing regression. I highly recommend that you watch them. I wish you good luck with your group project, and thank you for watching this tutorial.